welcome to this, and this will be my pay-per-view review for Night of Champions, WWE's annual Night of Champions, where we get all the titles on the line. I know some people think that should be on WrestleMania. That's a different debate for a different time. I don't necessarily agree with that, but hey, what are you going to do? Anyways, uh, so we started the match out, and, and one of the growing themes throughout this show was, was the, this show nailed home the point that the WWE sucks at putting over young talent, just, just the way it is. And I, I don't mean as far as who went over on the show, just people's reaction to a lot of the people on the show. So, there we go. Um, first of all, we had Chris Jericho and his mystery partner taking on, uh, Ted DiBiase and Cody Rhodes. Um, Chris Jericho's Mr. Partner wound up being Big Show. A lot of people are going to debate about should, you know, they put in a young, someone, an up-and-comer into that role to kind of, you know, feed off of Jericho and kind of feed off of Jericho's heat. Maybe. Um, I would mind that. This match was okay. Pretty much probably what you would expect between two heel teams. And um, the only person that anyone really cared about in the match was Chris Jericho. So, there we go. I know some people think that that pretty much ruined the pay-per-view right there. Um, killed the crowd, the whole thing. This was a bad crowd. Had nothing to do with this match because there was lots of other matches which they could have woken up, and they didn't. And part of the reason is because the WWE didn't give them any reason to care um, about some of these guys. Then CM Punk came out, or he didn't come out, started a promo backstage, then came out to the audience to cut a promo basically on the audience. And um, very good promo, probably one of the best things of the night. I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, this was this was great. This would have been a money promo if it had been on TV. It wasn't on TV. Um, some people will probably gripe about that, except the fact that I really don't know where you would put the time you took to do this promo later on in the show. So, there you go. Oh, man, my nose itches. Um, next we had uh, Tommy Dreamer versus Christian. Um, this was another okay match. Um, nothing spectacular. He had two faces going against each other, and two faces from a show that nobody watches. So, there you go. Um, next, we had Kofi Kingston, Primo, who was taking the place of Big Show in, the six, in this match, um, in the six-pack challenge match. Um, MVP, The Miz, Carlito, and Jack Swagger. This was a good match. This was like an X Division match, except that there was kind of a story to be told. They took their time. It wasn't like spot, 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 spot. It was like spot, isolate, you know, have a little bit of a match, hit a spot, maybe hit another spot. It's had a really good flow in it. I really like that part of it. Um, man, my nose itches. Um, the, uh, the, the ending sequence was really good. The ending spot um, was, was, was really good stuff. Good match, um, kind of what you would expect. Like I said, kind of like an X Division match, except probably built up a little bit better. Um, as far as that went. And we had a surprisingly good match in Michelle McCool versus Melina. Uh, Melina, uh, I'm a big fan of, so I probably rated this a little higher than most people would, but this was a very fun match. Um, you know, Melina getting bent up into all sorts of crazy, uh, bendy ways, and, um, Michelle McCool, you know, she's not too bad, so they went out there and they had a really good match. They, they hit some, some cool spots. It was sloppy. It was what, you know, a lot of women's matches, particularly a lot of what the um, WWE women's matches are. Um, but still was one of probably one of the best uh, women's matches probably of this year as far as, you know, WWE and, and TNA. So um, that's not saying much, but it, it was pretty surprising and was pretty enjoyable, to be honest. Uh, next we had uh, Randy Orton versus Triple H versus John Cena. Um, kind of in the middle of the of the card, kind of like WrestleMania 24, if I remember right, um, where the first match was, and I hyped up the fact of that match as well. Um, had a pretty good uh, video package, which I liked, and then there was this match, which was okay. Um, really, if John Cena had not been in this match, I don't think the crowd would have cared about it. The only time that the only thing they really cared about was Randy Orton and John and uh, Triple H beating up on John Cena. Uh, I do have a problem with this match. The ending of this match saw Legacy come out, saw DiBiase and Rhodes come out, and uh, basically give uh, Randy Orton the win, which I didn't really like, because before that, you had Triple H and John Cena both had Randy Orton in this weird submission hold. They both had a hold on, and uh, Orton tapped. Now, I think what they should have done is just ended the match there, and the ref said, well, you both won. 
I'm giving you both winners. You're now co-champions. And then at SummerSlam, they could face off for the championship. And because I think John Cena versus Triple H, more people would like to see that than John Cena versus Randy Orton or Randy Orton versus Triple H. That's just my take on it. This was a good match. Nothing blown away. Um, you would think these guys could put on better. I commented, you know, I remember when we were saying Randy Orton was going to be like the next great thing, and then this feud with Triple H has just been sucky, to be honest. Uh, next, we had Maurice versus uh, Mickey James. This sucked, um, and it wasn't Mickey James's fault. Um, this was bad. Um, not much to talk about. Sloppy uh, went on probably five minutes too long. I don't know why they gave them ten minutes when there was no reason for them to go ten minutes. You could have given the you could have given them the five minutes extra you gave this match. You could have given to the first women's match, and it would have made that match probably even better. I mean, that's 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 no lie. This was not good. This was bad. Um, next, we had Ray Mysterio versus Dolph Ziggler. This was okay. Um, the fans really weren't into this. I think if the fans had been a little bit more into this, I think it would have probably been a little better. This match, more than any other match, I think this match suffered from. The crowd just not being in it. It's because they didn't care about Dolph Ziggler. Um, they really didn't care about the six-pack challenge either too much. Um, too much. I mean, there were, there were spots that they liked, but they really didn't care about this because they didn't care about Dolph Ziggler because they haven't done a good enough job of kind of building them up. And that's just unfortunate because they had a pretty good little match, but it just, you know, just didn't really work because the crowd wasn't into it. And then we had CM Punk versus Jeff Hardy. Uh, definitely, I, I think, probably the best match they've had that I can think of, um, unless they had something on TV that I just don't remember, um, but was uh, pretty enjoyable, really liked it, um, they went out there and uh, told a pretty good little story, CM Punk played an awesome heel um, during this match, but the crowd again just didn't feel, they were into parts of it, and then they would kind of die, and then they would be into it, and then but they did pop near the end with some of the false finishes, um, but like I said, the the greatness of this match, and it's not really not enough to really make it great, was kind of CM Punk being a heel, because he made an awesome, awesome heel in this match. But, that was that. Um, overall, this match was, or the pay-per-view wasn't great. Um, I give it a 6.75 um, on my scale, which, you know, people, you know, on the victory road, you need to go back and look what that was. You need to go look on what I say on my scale, because I include wacky crap on my scale, which is on my page, um, go back and see what that is. You know, so I would say it's about an average pay-per-view. Um, I wouldn't recommend seeing it. There's nothing really on the show to really, you know, go out of your way to see, but at the same time, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It was just kind of just there and just kind of okay. So there was that. But um, that's it. That's all. With that, I'm out. Later.